completing veneers is the right decision. This is what I needed to do. But being a dentist and uh, enamel dentin, you know, drilling, so I always was hesitant to do the full-on prep and getting veneers and cutting enamels away. And I always knew about uh, lumineers. I hadn't really had any hands-on experience with it. So finally, after really seeing the results and you know the fact that there was no prep, the enamel stays where it is. It was just a no-brainer, to be honest with you. I, I wish I had done this years ago. Denmat's philosophy has always been to silenate first, try it in, and then clean it out with resin because you can't contaminate resin with resin. The silenization process in the Denmat setup is basically the porcelain's been etched already. So this is the conditioner, this is citric acid. Um, you rinse it and dry it after 30 seconds. You should get a frosted white appearance because it's already been privacy etched. The Serenade Prime is a silene. This is not a pre-hydrolyzed silene. So pre-hydrolyzed silenes are one step, but their shelf life is shorter. Not pre-hydrolyzed silenes require acidification of the surface first and then Serenade Prime. So one of the things is he did have a temporary on, and before I get serious, I do want to take a fine diamond and run it over the surface. So this is just to make sure, and I'm just going to roughen up. What am I doing here? He had a temporary on, and we spot bonded some teeth. And so I want to make sure that there's no spot in the middle of the tooth that's maybe just a little bit got some resin on it that may hold up the veneer a little bit. And I do believe magnification is critical with this so you can see what you're doing. So my first go-to is if you get a set of no minimal prep that fits intimately, where should you adjust first is I would round the incisal the edges ever so slightly. Because 99 times the 10, it's been my experience that that'll make it just drop right down. The second go-to place would be the embrasures. Okay, so now I want to do a trial run because we have a dark right front and a normal left, right? So I need to, let's take Ultra Bond, mm -hmm. Supreme White, mm -hmm. and we're just going to try 8 and 9 in. And so what I'm thinking in my head is, am I going to see a shine through, which I think I am, and do I paint the opaquer on the tooth? Do I prep the tooth here a little bit? Do I not prep the tooth and use more opaquer? Will the opaquer come to the surface? Do I have to layer the opaquer? And we'll see what happens. So what do you see? So my, if I would just look at the dead matte materials, there's supreme white and then the supreme white block out. So I'm just going to try the block out because they say that's more opaque. You want to go a little lighter than that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he would like a little higher value so we go to the block out. The block out is what it says, it blocks out, so it's a higher level of opacity. That bumped it up a little bit. And because we asked for translucency, this is a bleach four. This is a bleach three. It's a little lighter. Now I can make this lighter by adding in a little bit of tetrapake. Kevin, what's your thought? You know? You like it? You think that's good enough? Okay. So now we have a base reference point of what we got to match. So this is the Supreme White blockout put on a dark tooth now. So now they both have Supreme White blockout. A little too low. So we might want to build that up a little bit. And I can start to see a little cervical area there. So now the dilemma is, I'm just trying to go through this very slowly. Obviously, um, once we decide to place it, I gotta speed up. I can take the tetrapake enamel and put it on the tooth. And then so, once again, it's a little light? It's too light. You, know, oh, yeah, you like that he's color? Still okay, he's still hooked on that color. Okay, so I'm thinking, I put on a lighter shade, I sort of got the guy's shade dialed in now. 
but I put on this and it's too dark. Then I put the opaquer on and it's too light. So I can either mix the two together, but I'm working with such a thin layer. I think if I just knock down and give a little thickness, maybe the block out will work. And my theory in my head is let's try a little space, increase the die spacer as you would. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gently gonna contour, probably starting at the mid facial and go right down to the free gingival margin. And I'm not going to prep a lot, but I do need an increase in dye spacer. Uh, what am I using as a red? I call it a fat flame or whatever, what I used to use on gold work to put a bevel on. Okay, and then let's go to... Now I was thinking about using some pink because as you just witnessed, when we use the tetrapake enamel, it just whites everything out. And sometimes you want that. A little better, but maybe just a smidge more. So if I paint this really thick, it was too white, right? So what I'm going to do, I can paint this thinner and go like that. Okay, what do you think? Yeah? Okay. So let's rinse real good here, Joanne. Mm -hmm. And then let's just go polish. We actually just use the Denmap polishing paste, but it's not corrugated, so that's the good news. If he is preoperatively tight contacts, those are sort of, that's pretty tight. Another trick that I've learned over the years is if you have a really tight con, you know, obviously this contact, I'm going to tell you, is going to open up real easy because there is no contact and it's just the veneer. But back here, he has some tight contacts. So I might just go like this once or twice. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to have to, it'll make it easier for me to clean out the contacts when we finish. Okay, so I am going to dry off the lingual surface here. And the first step here is to isolate the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and take some of this paint on dental dam. And what I'm going to do is start in the posterior. And when you do cementations, your cement sometimes will go all over in the little grooves of the teeth and all that. This helps to eliminate that. It's an optional step. I usually do a couple teeth. And I don't do a full cure. I just spot cure, just like that. And when we do this, this helps to eliminate cleanup a little bit. And I probably could have dried these teeth a little bit more. Now when we get to the diastema, I cannot fill in that diastema. Because if I go from the lingual, the stuff will run facially and then the veneer won't fit. So from that standpoint, and I'll show you this after we're done with it in just a hair here. Uh, if there is contact, I can run it up from the lingual. If there isn't, I'm scared to run it up from the lingual because if it runs too far facially, things won't fit. So the good thing is this will help you clean up. The bad thing is if you get it too much in there, too facially, your veneer won't fit. Okay, so we're going to go through the etching bonding process. So if you want to syringe on a bunch, you can. Um, using a micro brush takes you a little longer, but you use less etchant. This is phosphoric acid, as you all know. Only thing different about etching seal versus other etchants is it does have something called aluminum oxalate in it, which is supposed to seal the dentin. Oxalate based on Bonacore is sort of a, it'll form a precipitate in dentin surfaces. 
So it's supposed to be like a desensitizing etch that helps seal the dental tubules a little bit or decrease the porosity of them. So I'm going to dry everything here. He has a little root sensitivity in a couple areas, and so I don't want to get him too much. But I do want to see if I can get a frosted enamel appearance. Okay, this is 10-year A and B. 10-year um, A and B is a bonding system that's been around for 20 plus years. It's an acetone solvent. This is really thin, so if I come up here and it says three to five coats, if I blow this, I just blew it all off. So the rule is with bonding agents, the thinner they are, the more you want to put them on and you, know, you can either evaporate them with that saliva ejector or you can blow from a distance gently and you can get a glossy surface. That glossy surface is the resin, the NTG, GMA, PMDM. It's a chemical cure. So we put on two, five coats, how many, until I get a glossy surface. A lot of the more newer bonding agents and the one steps use solvents because you try to thin out your resin so you get penetration and wettability of the adhesive. Um, acetones are the best to form an azeotrope on a moist surface like dentin. Alcohols are second. So a lot of the newer manufacturers have used alcohol as opposed to acetone. The newest generation of tenure is where Denmat went and mixed alcohol and acetone together. So it decreased the amount of acetone. And this is a two-step process, so we got a nice glossy surface now. This is the Tenure S. This Tenure S is basically an unfilled so resin. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put these on. And I'm going to gently blow this thin. And so now we have resin everywhere, and technically if he coughed or started to lick his teeth, I would just blow off the resin and the saliva and add more resin. So this is our tetrapake. And when I first painted it really thick, it was too much. So if I was a technician, this is sort of me playing with color and tints, and I'm just trying to get the similar value between right and left. So I'm going to thin this out a little bit. And you're not looking for color as much as just value. So I'll take my little Lumi grip. Okay. So now this is important. This is where you get bubbles. So always check inside here and make sure that there's no bubbles in there. So up, see, look at that little round circle. Okay. Okay, so right now you guys should be staring at eight. Six. So we're doing second buys. Turn this way. Take a look, Kevin. Pretty good. Okay. Okay, so we want to seat this, use the incisal edge, push, and not push on the veneer, but just tack it for one second. Okay? Push it down. Not push it down, but tack it. And this is just to hold it in place. There's a lot of different clinicians that do this a lot of different ways. I'm just going to show you how I do mine. So we don't want to push down on the veneer because the way you crack a veneer is you have this die spacer and it fits on its margins. And then what you do is you push it because you want it to fit better. You flex it. You don't know you flexed it. You cure it and now it's flexed. And then occlusion, 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 occlusion 
and then the porcelain relaxes and what happens? Crack. So now I'm going to go do a full cure. This is a sapphire light. I'm not going to stick it right on the surface. I'm going to go back like 10 millimeters because the research shows that this is a just as good at zero as 10 millimeters light intensity. And so we'll go ahead and just cure this. I did a little bit of cleanup there. Some guys want to do a flossing at this standpoint. I didn't. So we'll go ahead and cure this all the way. And we're doing a five second cure per veneer. Okay, so there's the paint on dental dam. Do you want to hold that? Mm -hmm. And so if we come in here, and if I pop this on the lingual surface, wherever this dam material was, you can start to see that See right there, you wherever I mean, ideally, you'd want to get it as close to your margins as possible. But the problem is, if you get too close and the veneer doesn't fit, then you're really screwed. See the occlusal embrasures that we don't have to clean out. Sorry, occlusal on the buys in the pit and fissures. Okay, now we've got to go finish this. So if I come up here, there's a little can you hear that little ledge there? Okay, now part of that's going to be composite. Now, if you were doing no prep class 5s or prep class 5s and you just placed your class 5, would you finish the margin with a burr or would you take a scaler and start ripping the excess off? Because I don't want to test my bond strength now. I'd like it to mature a little bit. So I'm thinking I want you guys all to forget this is porcelain and it's just composite. Just pretend in your head because it'll fix your paradigm. Yeah, so there's a finishing kit by Denmat, which I'm going to use all those burrs right here, okay? The two burrs that I have a choice here are a 12 fluted burr and a long fine diamond. The long fine diamond is an end cutting burr. It will cut at the end. The 12 fluted burr is not an end cutting burr. So if you guys lean in and really cut, you're going to have a ditch. So I'm going to have you do an angle that m mimics what the porcelain or the emergence profile of the DEJ would be. This is a little safer, the 12 fluter, because it doesn't cut as much, but it's a little slower. If you're not heavy-handed, make sure you have a finger rest and you're with magnification going over that. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm just going to start here on one side, Kevin, and I'm just going to go up. And I'm going to pretend that this is direct composite and just go around and I'm sorry that the light's on here maybe I'll do one side and then stop and show you what I'm doing you notice I even got two fingers on the burr here on the, on the hand piece and I'm using this is the weird part is I'm using the porcelain as a guide right now so I am going to come in because there's a little bit of flash here that I want to clean off that I can't get with the burr because it's on the soft tissue but I just went over that, and you can see that's totally different than that little bit there. Now, there's still a little bit of a catch there, but it's better. That one's not too bad, okay? So I'm going to come back in. So I'm going to go right at the gum line here. So if I'm using Emax or lithium disilicate, I'm going to lean towards the diamond finishing, not towards the pearl fluter. But when I'm done with this, I'll come back with a 12 fluter. Okay. So that was just a quick run over. So I'm going to take a 12 fluter here. And this is more of a polishing burr. This has a sharper point to go up the embrasures. And so this is probably because, you know, when you didn't spend the time prepping, guess what? You got to spend your time finishing. And that, there's a trade-off there. If I come down here now, there is a contour change, but there's no catch. Okay? Okay, so I got a lot of excess on the back teeth here. So I've got my long fine down in, and I'm just going to go right through all the embrasures really quickly. 
and just pretend like, oh, I forgot to put my matrix in. I'm doing a bunch of class threes. And then I'm going to come back with a football burr and just do the occlusion here. And then we'll do a quick equilibration, open a couple contacts, and be done. Okay. Um, anyway, so we got a football burr here. This is just blending. And all I'm doing is just blending this composite and porcelain smooth. Some dentists will talk about dry finishing. I would not want to use, you know, dry burrs on this because it just cause cracking and crazing and bond fatigue and everything right off the bat. This is a Shure instrument, Demat sells them. Okay, so I'm just flicking off composite here. This is when I really would like to have my hygienist come in and say, can you clean up all the excess? Um, okay, let's rinse it here. <laughs> open, and then tap, 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 and open. i got to open a few contacts, but I usually do the contacts before. Oh, boy, yeah. Okay, so he's hitting on the incisal edge wrap of... Four and five, and I didn't get all of the composite off on the. I like this big fat blue paper so you can really see the. Uh, and open there. So he's starting to hit on his molar. Um, but he's still got a little bit left on the incisal wrap of the bar. Tap, tap, tap. So I'm going to equilibrate him in a minute, but at first I got to get his bite back to where it was, and then we'll go fix. So the last burr you want to open a contact with is this 12 fluter, and the reason why is because of the shape at the tip. So if I come in and go labially up the embrasures, labially up the embrasures, and I'm going into that embrasure. The reason why I'm saying a 12 fluter is because the 12 fluter is sharper at the tip. Now I'm going and doing the same thing on the lingual. I'm going to open a couple of contacts and then you can call it good. So this is a seri saw. Um, if you decide to cut this porcelain, it will not cut porcelain, just so you know. Really what this is, is it's a high-tech wedge. So when you go in here and you start going down, you might get hung up, okay? But if you get hung up, you can rock, or you can, I always push towards the patient yep. because I don't want to pull towards the patient and pop the veneer off. And I'm gonna push towards the patient and just go like that, okay? Now this is what you guys mostly use in your office that should be outlawed in dentistry. Open. I put this in. I want you to watch his head. This is what creates open contacts. Would you stop using this, okay? So this is a seri sander. Now what we're gonna do is when we go in with this, I'm gonna go in. Now if it gets really tough here, what I'm gonna do is rock, okay? And then this is the trick that I think you all should remember. Loosen this blade. Do you see how it, when I loosen the blade it wraps to the embrasure? Mm -hmm. And see that, that interproximal margin. I am going to now buff out just one or two little like that and come up. There's a right and a left to these sanders. This is called a seri sander. I'm going to come down, loosen the blade, wrap it to match the gingival contour or embrasure where they floss back and forth a couple times, once or twice. Then I'm going to come back in with floss and I'm going to do each one of these. And I don't want to hang up, so when I pull this way and I go up, there's no hang up. I go this way and I go that way, pull in. And see, zero hang up. Do you see that? Okay, no excuse. I'm very, very happy with my smile. The color is perfect and without losing the natural look. So now that I have my lumineers on, I think uh, they become a great advertising tool because, you know, I can just smile and say, hey, if you want these, I can give them to you. Impression, cement, adios. Can't get easier than that.